We present a new image-to-image -image translation model based on contrastive learning. This is a joint work of Berkeley and Adobe. What is unpaired image-to-image -image translation? Let's say we want to train a model that transforms horses to zebras. We can collect a dataset of horses and a dataset of zebras, but it's impossible to employ supervised training because we cannot collect a pair of horse and zebra with the same pose, background, and composition. Still, we would like to learn a sensible image translation function like this. By sensible translation, I mean, for example, we want the translated zebra to retain some resemblance to the horse image such as pose or size. To achieve this, many image-to-image -image translation methods such as cyclegen, munit, and drape use cycle consistency loss. That is, an inverse translation function is learned at the same time to minimize pixel reconstruction loss. Of course, the back translation should be penalized if the pose becomes different. However, the pixel cycle loss assumes bijection, which is sometimes too restrictive. For example, there are many plausible horses that correspond to the same zebra. Once the horse is transformed into a zebra, the color information of the horse is gone. Therefore, it shouldn't really matter which color the back translated horse becomes. Ideally, for this example, the image-to-image -image model should be careful not to change the body pose and parts, but able to switch between different styles of horses and zebras. In that sense, an ideal loss should be invariant to the changes in the horizontal axis of this grid, while sensitive to the changes in the vertical axis. Let me describe our method that aims to learn such an embedding space. We train a network that transforms input horses to output zebras. We use a GAN discriminator to make the output look like a zebra. We consider a pair of input and output patch at the same location and enforce that the embeddings of the pair are similar. On the other hand, the patches from other locations should be mapped far from them. We formulate this as a contrastive loss. The corresponding input and output patches form a positive pair. Patches from other locations form negative pairs. In more detail, we use cosine similarities. We maximize the similarity of the positive pair while minimizing that of the negative pairs. We do this by formulating a classification task with the target class as the positive pair. Such formulation, called InfoNCE, was introduced and used in several works in representation learning. However, unlike MoCo and SimClear that used hand-designed data mutation to produce positive pairs, we used the outputs of the generator that's learned at the same time. To project the patches into the embedding space, we used the first half of the generator as our encoder. Moreover, we found that computing the contrastive loss at multiple layers is important for stable training. The detailed ablation study can be found in our paper. In the end, our method replaces the fixed pixel-based cycle loss. Moreover, our method doesn't require a generator or discriminator in the inverse direction. As a result, our method can be trained faster than cyclegen with a smaller memory footprint. This will be helpful when an image translation model is trained jointly with other models in a larger context, such as domain adaptation or sim to real in robotics tasks. Also, interestingly, we observed that the choice of negative patches is important. By default, we only sample the negatives from the same image, which we call internal patches. On the other hand, we can also include random patches from other images as additional negatives, which we call external patches. In representation learning, it's known that a large number of external negatives improve performance. Instead, here we work at the patch level, so we can use the same image as the source of our negatives. Indeed, when we tried to use the external patches as negatives, the output quality was worse. We hypothesize that it's because the external patches are too easy to distinguish and they sometimes contain false negatives, like the highlighted horse head patch. In fact, the power of internal patches has been well known in classic texture synthesis work. More recently in the paper from Weissman Institute, training a super-resolution network on the same but downsampled image can lead to competitive performance to other methods trained on the entire dataset. Likewise, 
Our model fully leverages the internal statistics of a single input image. Here is a visual comparison of using internal versus external patches. Compared to our default method, using the external patches causes more artifacts and signs of mode collapse. For more quantitative results, please refer to our paper. Also, we found that the samples from the target domain can be used for regularization following the identity loss used in Cyclegen. Normally, we compute the contrastive loss using an image from the source domain, which is horse in this figure. Additionally, we can provide a zebra image from the target domain as an input to the generator network. And we still enforce the contrastive loss to prevent making unnecessary changes to the input images. Now we can decide a name for our method. Let's call it cut, short for contrastive unpaired translation. We use the identity regularization as well as the contrastive loss. As opposed to the pixel cycle loss, our loss is more flexible yet faster than cyclegen. Actually, our method can be made even faster by not using the identity regularization but using a larger weight on the contrastive loss. Here we show the training speed of our method compared to cyclegen. Note that we use the same network and GAN loss. The only difference is the contrastive versus pixel cycle loss. Also, when compared to other methods, our speed is much better than two-sided methods and on par with the one-sided method. Here are the visual examples. It can be seen that Cut is able to make larger changes than Cyclegen, such as putting large zebra texture. Our method also performs well compared to more recent models. Lastly, Fast Cut, due to larger contrastive loss, behaves more conservatively and hence more similar to Cyclegen. What do I exactly mean by more conservative transformation? Here is an interesting bias in the horse to zebra dataset. Using an off-the-shelf semantic segmentation network, we found that the zebra pixels take up more than twice the horse pixels. If such is the case, should the output zebras match the pixel frequency of the target or the source dataset? It may be a matter of personal taste. In the more flexible cut model, we match the target zebra pixel frequency. If you carefully observe the highlighted portion, you will see that the cut model actually enlarges the horse body. In the more conservative fast cut model, we better match the source, generating less zebra pixels. Still, both cut and fast cut make more changes than cyclegen, which could lead to more artifacts in the background in doing so. Our default cut model can be used on various image-to-image -image translation datasets. One way to quantitatively evaluate the quality of the results is using FID. It shows that our method is more powerful in distribution matching. Lastly, since our contrastive loss only uses internal patches from the same image, we can even apply our method on single image datasets. Here we take a high-resolution Monet's painting and translate the image to the style of a target photograph using the patch discriminator. This setting connects image-to-image -image translation to image stylization method. Here is a famous painting by Monet. Using a reference photo, we applied stylization method to turn the painting into a photograph. But it's quite difficult. Here's the result of Gaddis. Here's Strauss. Here's WCT2. And here's our translation result. We also tried a patch version of Cyclegen with pixel cycle consistency loss, but it produced more artifacts. Here's another painting of Monet. Here are the results of stylization methods. And our method best matches the style and photorealism of the reference photo. Here are more results of single image translation the full comparison is shown in the paper. Thank you for your attention. Please visit our webpage for code and pre-trained models.